What are some of the major obstacles to going to confession? One would be the objection that it's not biblical. We know that it is biblical because Jesus breathed forth his Holy Spirit upon the apostles and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. Whose sins you forgive, they will be forgiven. Whose sins you will bind, they will be held bound. This gift was given to the apostles, the first priests, the first bishops, Easter Sunday night. Another objection might be, well, I don't know the examine I don't know the act of contrition. No problem. The priest will give that to you in the confessional. Another objection, I don't have time. That's really not true. Because we all have 24 hours a day. We all have seven days a week. It's a question of priorities. We should always put God first in our lives. Remember the words of Jesus. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and everything else will be given to us besides. So put God first. Another objection would be this. Well, I'm ashamed to go to confession. You know what the devil does? When we commit a sin, he takes away our shame. When we have to come back to God in mercy, he fills us so much with shame that he paralyzes us. So overcome the shame. Be humble. Be transparent. Be clear. Be sincere. And you'll receive God's grace. Another objection to confession would be the following. Well, if I go to confession, then I'm going to, I'm going to do the same sin again. This might be the case, but in moral theology there's a principle called the principle of graduality. The more you go to confession, the less grave will be your sin and the less frequent will be your sin. As well as one of the graces and fruits of confession is that of preventive medicine can actually help you to avoid falling into sins in the future. What's another objection to confession? Well, many years ago a priest got angry at me in the confessional. Just forgive the priest. Just trust that the next time you go to confession the priest will receive you well. Pray for the priest. Another objection would be this. Well, the priest, he might tell my sins to others under no condition. We as priests, we are obliged morally to keep absolute secrecy when we hear confessions. What does this mean? What you say in the confessional is just going to be between you and the priest and God. There was once a priest who was hearing the confession of a queen years ago. The name of the priest was John Nepomucene. And the king tried to pry into the confessional, asking the priest what his wife had done. And the priest said he would not reveal the sins of the queen. The king tried to bribe the priest with money and possessions and land and other things, but the priest was very firm. The, priest, the, the king got very angry, and he actually threatened to kill the priest. And the priest preferred to even die. So the priest was taken, thrown over a bridge, and he drowned, so as not to divulge, to reveal the secret of confession. And the name of this priest is St. John Nepomucene, who is the patron of the seal of the confessional. So my friends... There are many temptations against the sacrament of confession. And the reason being is that the enemy knows that if you make a good confession, you're going to receive so many graces. So the devil is going to try to place as many obstacles as possible to prevent you from having an experience of God's mercy. Do not give in to the temptation to hold off confession. If you were to take poison, you would rush to the hospital. If your house was burning down, you'd call the fireman. If our soul is in moral jeopardy, even more so, we should have recourse 
to the healing grace of God's mercy. Don't say tomorrow. Just do it now.